Hi, I'm Ransom Stevens, author of The God Patent. Our question today is, what is perturbation theory? Are you sure? Okay, this is actually a very useful concept. If we know how a simple system works, then we can get solutions to successively more complicated systems by using perturbation theory. Here's how it works. The mathematical description of real-world systems can be expanded into a series like this. Each succeeding term is multiplied by a higher power of a small number. So, for example, we start with what we know, the simple thing, what we know. Then we add a smaller effect that we don't really understand how it fits into the system, and it gets a coefficient to make sure it's smaller, say something like 1 over 100. Then there's a much smaller effect, and it gets 1 over 100 squared, which is 1 over 10,000. Then there's a much, much smaller effect, and it gets a still tinier coefficient, so everything gets weighed in appropriately. The classic example are the energy levels of the electron in a hydrogen atom, which, by the way, is the most well-understood system in the universe. For hydrogen, this number is related to, well, it's called the fine structure constant. And the first term that we know is the simple electrical interaction between the negative electron and the positive proton. The second term is a correction for Einstein's relativity. The third term, is, and this is the really cool one, it's called the Lamb shift, and it's caused by something called vacuum polarization, where electrons and positrons, matter and matter, antimatter, pop in and out of the vacuum. Totally cool stuff that we should talk about at another time. So what good is this? Well, the point is that perturbation theory gives us a language for talking about the relative importance of different effects when we understand something about a system but aren't sure about how the smaller details come together. I'm going to give you two examples. First, the effect of cell phone radiation on the brain. Here are a couple of cell phones. Now, since the photons radiated by cell phones are far too low in energy to cause damage to brain tissue, the first order effect is heating. But cell phones don't get that hot. So, to first order, cell phones are harmless. At second order, cell phone radiation penetrates the skull and, ca and can at second order, cell phone radiation penetrates the skull and can cause molecular bonds to rotate and vibrate. This is the heating mechanism, but maybe something peculiar to the rotation or vibration could have an effect that could lead to a problem. This is a small effect. The next effect is not from cell phone radiation at all, but from our use of cell phones. For example, the effect of talking to someone you feel passionate about or, or getting a text message that really makes you angry or happy, this will have an effect on your brain, maybe a large effect. Here's another example, dieting. At first order, dieting is as simple as the difference in the calories you eat and the calories you burn. Burn more calories than you eat and you'll lose weight. This is called the thermodynamic diet. At second order, though, what you eat matters. A thousand calories of cake will have a different effect than a thousand calories of green beans. Things like blood sugar, insulin levels, and what have you are affected by the difference. There's another second order term, and that's genetics. Your metabolism is different than, not, than mine because of your lineage. So your response to the difference of calories in and calories out will differ from mine. Maybe one of us loses weight faster than the other, even if we're the same weight and eat the same things and do the same exercise. A third order term is what time of day you eat. Compared to the others, this is a small effect, but non-zero. You get the idea. Perturbation theory provides an organized way to combine effects of increasing complexity onto the solution of a more simple problem. First, there's the direct effect, then less direct, and so on. It's very tidy. And here's a cool aspect from physics. Most systems in nature cannot be described in closed mathematical equation. But with perturbation theory, 
the physicists can frequently provide answers that are as accurate as you want arbitrary accuracy but never exact if the physicist has the time and resources to calculate them